Hey. Okay, I'm not going to spend any time talking about the weather. It just doesn't deserve any talking about. It's just too crazy. Okay, moving on. But I would like to spend one minute just being grateful for the fact that we were born in the 20th century with air conditioning and with things like ice and with things like uh, just, just electricity. Oh my God, I can't even tell you. My cleaning lady, my wonderful Persian bubby, uh, cleaning lady, cook, all around lifesaver was here this morning and she was telling me that when she was a young girl in Persia, I guess Iran, this is what they did. They had no air conditioning and it was this kind of weather. It was like a hundred degree weather. And they also had no um, fridge to keep food fresh, to keep milk, to keep whatever. Okay, so this is what they would do. And it was this weather, this weather. They went to the corner store that sold huge blocks of ice. And they would put it in their house in the middle of the living room. And that is literally where the whole family kind of hung out for the whole day. In front of this huge piece of ice, they would like put all their food on top of this huge block of ice. They would sit next to it. They would put their face next to it. They would chip off little pieces and they would take out, she would say they would scrape out the inside of the cucumber and they would mix it with ice chips and just eat it. It would like cool their inside beyond, beyond. Let me just say thank you Hashem for ice and for coffee and for iced coffee and air conditioning and refrigerators. Okay, life is so good. And with that, we will move on. Now, I wanted to talk about, this is actually also a um, Tvar Torah for this week's Shabbat. Um, this week's portion, Torah portion is Nitzavim Vayelech. And in Nitzavim, we have a very famous Pasuk, uh, which I'll mention in a minute. But I first wanted to say that the reason why I connect to all this is because we have to do tshuva. Uh, this is actually in Itibo Shalom, not in the section on character traits, which we've been doing usually, but the section on tshuva, if you want to follow along in the same volume, volume Aleph, first volume. Um, anyway, so in here it says that the root, we have to do tshuva on the roots, okay? We can't just sit around and do tshuva about like, oh, I said Lashon Hara to that person, oh, I said this and that. Our actions are brought about by our mind, brain and heart, which really are our character traits and our thoughts, okay? So we have to work on our thoughts and our character traits because they are the roots of the of the actions that we do wrong. So there's no point in working on actions if you're not gonna work on the root. And he says the root of even that, why it is that we choose to do wrong things or have wrong thoughts or have bad values or have bad character traits, the reason why we go in that direction is a crazy thing. It's called Bechira Chofshit, free will, and that's the famous verse in this week's parsha. It says like this, I gave before you today life and good, and death and bad, and you go ahead and choose life. Life, life, that would be great. Um, life. Now, the question is, what? Why do you need a commandment to choose life? Wouldn't everybody choose life? You see, oh, choose life, meaning life and good are on one hand, death and bad are on the other. I'm going to go and choose death and bad. Who would do that? Everybody's going to choose life. No, because, says Nativa Shalom, like this, Hare, heyot ritzo no yitbarach shmo bevriata olam, uh, I'm sorry. Hashem wanted there to be choice in this world, and therefore, Hashem had to create a balance. Just like we have a natural desire to turn towards life, He says, like, just like even in this world, not only in the spiritual world, but even in this regular physical world just like we take so much pleasure in creativity and bringing life to things let's say bringing uh life to a project accomplishing something you creating a garden i know so many friends of mine have created gardens during corona time such a beautiful thing to do it gives you so much pleasure you see life you see growth okay in our lives as well 
just like we take pleasure in that, Hashem had to also create a certain degree of pleasure that we take from the opposite. Just like Ta'anuk shall binyan v'yitzira, with constructive things and with building, so too, Kamochen yesh lehefech ta'anuk shel heres v'chorban. There's a pleasure that we can take in um, destroying things, in destruction, in ruination. It's crazy. Hashem had to make it like that so that we would have free will. Meaning the sitra achra, this other side, this darkness, right? That's really just there to give us a balance. We have to realize, a friend of mine told me that the other day. We have to realize the Yetzirah Hara is just here to do Hashem's bidding. It's not like its own evil has its own essence. No, it's here just to give you a balance, just to give you the ability to choose good. It really does want you ultimately to choose good, but it has to, we have to have the feeling, some kind of fantasy that we also derive pleasure from ruining things, from destroying things. That's why we take pleasure, unfortunately, in destroying ourselves, our body, right? And he says like, Lama, uh, you know, Moshe choto le'echol ma'achalim ha'mehersim et gufo. Why do we eat candy and sugar and gummy bears and chocolate, milk chocolate, and all these terrible processed things? Ulemaleita avato bedvari mezikim le'gufo. And we want to fill our desires with things that just kill us. And we're also full of anger and stress. Umetach, tension. Guess what? Stress can kill you. There's almost a pleasure in getting angry and getting all stressed about something and getting all worked up. We think we're like there's some kind of righteous indignation when we know that this is killing us. We are choosing destruction, ruination. We're choosing to kill ourselves. And there's like some kind of perverted, distorted pleasure in that. But it's all to get us to um, have free will and just to turn around and push that away and choose good. And just say to ourselves, hold on. Let me recognize that this is wrong, that this is going to kill me, that this is bringing ruination to my body, to my soul, to my relationships, right? We like sometimes, we think there's a pleasure in taking revenge and in insulting somebody, making somebody feel bad. So we have to stop and say, whoa, this is just Hashem giving me a test, allowing me to choose. He wants me to choose life. I need to make that choice. I need to go away from that. And it's just going to bring us this tendency towards ruination and destruction just brings death. Okay, so if we kind of think to ourselves, we have to stop and say, this is destructive. It's destructive for our relationships. It's destructive for our love lives. It's destructive to our children. It's destructive to my body. It's destructive to my soul. This will lead to death. This is choosing death. Wow. That should make us take stock, move away from that ultimately destructive choice and just say, no, I'm moving in the other direction. I'm going to choose creativity. I'm going to choose productiveness. I have my, uh, my, my lovely sister-in-law. Well, I won't even say who she is, but everybody knows. She's my tzaddikas, my righteous sister-in-law. She says, she doesn't really like to go out to hang out just for nothing. She wants it to be productive. She's always looking to be productive. And it's a tremendous pleasure. I'm not like that so much. I have to learn from her. I derive pleasure sometimes in wasting time, sometimes in eating the wrong things, sometimes in just having, you know, just like, I don't know. I don't think it's productive, but whatever. Anyway, if I could just stop and take stock and say, wait, is this productive? Is this creative? Is this creating life? Is this choosing life? Is this building or is this destroying? Wow, right? Let's think about that.